Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss ill-advised government PPE contracts again and yet again. The small pest control company given large, mostly secret government contracts being at the centre of it all with yet a new PPE scandal. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So very quickly, for those who may not be following all of this. So at the start of the COVID crisis, we needed to procure a lot of medical equipment, including PPE, that the government had been advised to stockpile as recently as last year, but didn't. They didn't. They still didn't when the crisis was clearly on its way, but not here yet. They still didn't act. Eventually, when it was too late to get a head start, the government accepted that maybe we need to do something. Maybe we've got a bit of a healthcare crisis for which we need extra healthcare equipment. They talked about getting in a load of PPE and how the shortages were because nobody could have predicted this, even though government shown later by investigative journalists revealed that the government had been told very clearly what was needed and why in plenty of time. But it was very confusing because British PPE manufacturers said that they weren't getting NHS orders. They were producing PPE for other countries. We're not talking about little companies that had sprung up just to make stuff and it wasn't really good quality. It was perfectly good quality. They've been making it for some time. They were supplying other countries, but not the UK. In Parliament, at the time, Boris Johnson was stricken with the virus himself. So Dominic Raab was deputising. He tried to say, well, we have to take the time to make sure that we're getting the right equipment. We have to vet these companies and make sure that they can deliver what we need. You know, the last thing we want is to get a load of Duff equipment. OK, roll on half a year. And quite a lot of the equipment that arrived, if it arrived at all, quite a lot of it never did, from companies that they carefully selected has not been what was asked for. You know, one of those companies that is constantly at the centre of attention of these contracts is PestFix for a number of reasons. First of all, they are a very small company who have been given vast sums of money, hundreds of millions, to procure PPE when they are, as the name suggests, a pest control company. Two, most of the contracts that they've been given, they've been given quite a few, have not been published. That is unlawful. Three, all of the contracts have been awarded to them without tender process. Now, that is not unlawful during this emergency, but it is highly suspicious when the details of the contracts are being kept from the public. We're not also getting the equipment as ordered all the time as well. And four, some of the PPE delivered by this company, like many others, was not what was ordered. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I don't want people to think I've got a, an ax to grind with them. They just happen to be a very common example. I do have to say, I was contacted by PestFix allegedly the last time I did a video on this issue. I received an email and it could just be a troll, I suppose. It was very involved if it was, but it did, the, the, the domain name was pestfix.co.uk, but, you know, it was, a, it was an email from someone who identified themselves as Tom. Just, just Tom. As you do when you're writing an email to someone you don't know. You don't put your full name and title or anything like that. You just, you know, just Tom. And it, they said they were the head of communications for PestFix. Now, PestFix reportedly employs 16 people. Seems a bit lavish to me to have a head of communications. Head of communications implies a communications team of which... Tom, who appears to have no surname worth mentioning, is the head. OK, but he took issue with a few things I said in the video, none of which I actually said in the video. He felt I was defaming them. Now, I produce these videos in good faith. You know, uh, you can get things wrong, but I like to, to be sure of sources before going with them. So I replied back with a couple of questions. I said, well, I certainly wouldn't want to defame you. I even took the video down to give them time to respond. And I waited for that response. For example, they tried to claim that I said they did not deliver PPE. I did not say that. What I actually said was that they failed to deliver the correct PPE, that they'd realized their mistake very late. This was relating to face masks. And they had to recall those face masks because they were not the right sort. And they weren't a higher spec either. They were a much lower spec than was required. I mentioned that this created a hazard to health because the PPE provided was of a lower spec. I said that I'd, I wrote back to say that I'd seen images of the recall letters from the Good Law Project that they had issued 
and asked, are you saying that these are doctored, that these aren't true? That was two weeks ago. I'm still awaiting a response from Tom. And that was based on the kit delivered as a result of a contract that was eventually published. The, the law says that government contracts have to be published within 30 days of them being issued. This is months ago. But this one eventually came out. So, of course, you know, the Good Law Project, who have done a lot of investigation on this, uh, got straight onto it, came up with some queries. I based the video on that. Uh, another one emerged as well to do with isolation suits, which I was going to talk about. And I thought, I'll just leave it for now. But then we're now seeing um, additional news, you know, the BBC. And we're seeing news that political pressure was applied to past, past pest fixers contract for isolation suits in the safety assessments. Now, the suggestion here is that in order to fulfill these huge contracts, these procurement companies or pest control companies in this case, pretending to be procurement companies, who insist, by the way, they procured stuff in the past, that's fine. I haven't got a problem with whether they have or they haven't. What I've got a problem with is the fact that they are not procuring the equipment that they are contracted to do so. And if they're not equipped to do so, they should have refused the contract. But anyway, they, you know, these contracts are effectively going to dodgy providers of the PPE. You know, the, the procurement companies are getting what they can and then delivering it so the government can tick their boxes. Like, for example, just this week, Boris Johnson in Parliament was reeling off the numbers of P items of PPE his government had delivered to cheers from his backbenchers. And I'd be thinking, well, what, what if we were to ask the Prime Minister how many of that number he's just mentioned were actually the correct items? Has he removed, for example, all the items that never turned up at all? Has he removed the items that did turn up and were not the correct items? You know, the report goes on to say that the health and safety executive said the suits were not of the correct standard for use in hospitals. So now we've got this company delivering face masks and isolation suits, which were not the correct types. And this company was given quite a few contracts and we are still awaiting the details of the publication of the rest. It's only thanks to the, the likes of the Good Law Project that much of this malpractice is even coming to light. The BBC reported, I'll put a link in the description below, that it had been shown emails from the health and safety executive, which showed that the government pressured them into releasing the suits for use in the NHS, despite them being unsuitable. And this is my wider point as well. So although I may mention the name of the odd company with their snouts in the trough over this, it's the government principally at fault here. They are the ones choosing to give contracts to companies who cannot be expected to fulfil them. After all, if you run a business and someone offers you a ridiculous contract that you can make a lot of money out of, of course you will take it. I'm not saying that they that a business has no moral duty to go, actually, we can't fulfil this. But at the same time, the greater problem is with the one issue in the contract who should know better. The government are not supposed to be acting for profit. They're supposed to be acting in our interests. They are custodians of our resources, including taxes. You know, they're the ones choosing to give these contracts to companies with no reasonable expectation of being able to fulfil them and then corruptly falsifying the admin just so that they can keep boasting about the amount of PPE they've been supplying. I mean, it was bad enough when they were counting a pair of gloves as two items. I know it's two items, but we're not, you don't have Michael Jackson impersonators on the wards. If someone uses gloves, they use a pair. You know, as well as counting bin bags that were and still are being used as PPE in the absence of proper equipment. That's still the case now. It was also quite bad when doctors were discovering boxes of some of these PPE face masks and so on that had expired and that a new sticker had been put across the original expiry date with a newer expiry date. A fact easily discovered when they just peel the label off. And, and the, you know, the government have involved themselves very directly in falsifying safety assessments. That means they're not just giving money to unsuitable companies and not caring, not wanting to look too closely. They've actively involved themselves. They're actively complicit in the fraud. And you begin to wonder, therefore, so how many when there's so many contracts still shrouded, still kept from public view, how many usable items of PPE have actually been delivered by the government uh, through these companies? Because as time goes on, the scale of the scandal just grows. You know, no wonder the government have been keeping the details of these contracts secret, because as soon as they announce one, some investigators are straight onto it, highlighting the problems with it. 
you know. But keeping them secret is, of course, unlawful, which is why the Department for Health has been taken to court. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.